Welcome to our review on wave velocity. First thing we need to know then is we've got to learn one of these equations. So wave velocity in meters per second is the frequency measured in hertz times by the wavelength measured in meters. Make sure you add that to the list of equations that you need to learn and then practice that so that you do know it for the exam. Just a reminder for you from our previous little video that when we're talking about the frequency, that's the number of waves that pass a given point each second. And the wavelength is the distance from one point on a wave to the exact same point on the next wave. Let's have a look at an example of a kind of question that you could be asked then. So a singer sings a note with a frequency of 256 hertz. The velocity of sound in air is 330 meters per second. Calculate the wavelength. First thing we need to do then is we write down the equation that we've learnt, which is wave velocity is frequency times wavelength. But because we're being asked to calculate the wavelength, we've got to rearrange it. So quick rearranging, either using your math skills or stick it into the triangle. And then we end up with wavelength is velocity divided by frequency. Substitute in the values from the actual question there, and we end up with 330 divided by 256. Plug that into your calculator, and then we get our answer of 1.29 meters if we give it to two decimal places. As we mentioned previously, we can use a ripple tank to model these different wave items. So what we can actually do is using our ripple tank, we can actually calculate velocity. But in order to do that, we need to know the wavelength and the frequency of the wave we're looking at. So in our ripple tank, if we want to measure the wavelength, we can do this one of two ways. First way, you can submerge a ruler into your ripple tank, and then as the ripples are passing, you can measure it just by looking through. Obviously, potential inaccuracies there as the waves are moving, therefore it might be quite hard to judge. Alternatively, we could use something called a stroboscope, which is basically a strobe light. And what that does is it freezes the waves, and then we can have our ruler placed underneath onto the actual desk where it's being projected, and then we can measure the wavelength from those frozen waves, which is far easier and more accurate. In terms of measuring our frequency, again, two possibilities here. First one, we can place some kind of a marker into the tank and then count the waves passing at each second. Again, human error comes into play on that one. Alternatively, what we could do is place a small piece of paper that just touches the top of the vibrating bar as it vibrates. And then, as opposed to having to try to watch and count, you can listen. So that as you get that little bit of paper hit by the bar, you get that little vibrating sound and you can just count the number of vibrations each second. If we wanted to measure the velocity of sound, then we can do this in a couple of ways. First one, you can literally measure the distance you stand from a wall. So you've got the distance in meters, clap your hands just the once and then time how long it takes to hear an echo. Then we can use our speed as distance divided by time and that will give us the velocity of our sound. Second way we can do this is by using a pair of microphones. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to have one microphone and then a certain distance away from that we have a second microphone. Both of them are connected into that device called an oscilloscope. And then what happens is we can use the oscilloscope to work out the time between the wave reaching each microphone. So again, once you've got your microphone set up, you just clap and then on the screen, you'd be able to work out the time between them reaching each microphone. And then we can calculate the velocity because we've got the distance and we've got the time. The last thing to bear in mind is that when we're talking about the velocity of sound, it will vary depending on the temperature and the pressure because both of those factors will affect the velocity at which the disturbance in our wave can be transferred between those particles. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe and apply the relationship between frequency, wavelength and wave velocity. That means learn the equation, folks. You can also then describe how to measure the speed of ripples on the water surface and also how to measure the speed of sound.